Rolex really isn't like any other watch brand. In fact, the privately held, independently run entity isn't like most other companies. I can say this now with a lot more clarity than most people because I was there. Rolex rarely allows anyone into its hallowed halls, but I was invited to visit their four manufacturer locations in Switzerland and experience firsthand how Rolex makes their famous watches. Rolex is a universe of its own, respected, admired, valued, and known across the globe. Sometimes I sit back and think about all that Rolex is and does and find it hard to believe that at the end of the day, they just make watches. Rolex does just make watches and their timepieces have taken on a role beyond that of mere timekeeper. Having said that, the reason a Rolex is a Rolex is because they are good watches and tell pretty good time. It's taken me over a decade to fully appreciate the brand and it will probably take longer before I learn everything I'd like to know about them. Number 1 Rolex uses an expensive and difficult to machine steel because it looks better. Many watch lovers are familiar with the fact that Rolex uses a type of steel that no one else uses. Stainless steel is not all the same. Steel comes in various types and grades, and most steel watches are made from a type of stainless steel called 316L. Today, all the steel in Rolex watches is made from 904L steel, and as far as we know, pretty much no one else does. Why? Rolex used to use the same steel as everyone else, but in around 2003, they moved their entire steel production to 904L steel. In 1988, they released their first 904L steel watch with a few versions of the Sea Dweller. 904L steel is more rust and corrosion resistant and is somewhat harder than other steels. Most important to Rolex is that 904L steel, when worked properly, is able to take and hold polishes incredibly well. If you've ever noticed that steel on a Rolex watch looks different than other watches, it is because of 904L steel and how Rolex has learned to work with it. Number 2 Rolex has its own science lab. Given everything Rolex has done over the years, it shouldn't come as a surprise that they have an internal research and development department. However, Rolex takes it well beyond that. Rolex has not one, but several different types of extremely well-equipped professional science labs at their various facilities. The purpose of these labs isn't just to research new watches and things that may go into watches, but also to research more effective and efficient manufacturing techniques. One way of looking at Rolex is that they are an extremely competent and almost obsessively organized manufacturing company that just happens to make timepieces. Rolex labs are as diverse as they are amazing. Perhaps the most visually interesting is the chemistry lab full of beakers and tubes that carry liquids and gases. The Rolex chemistry lab is full of highly trained scientists. Number three, an army of gemologists work at Rolex. It has been said that Rolex has preposterous standards for the materials it buys from its suppliers. This includes things like metals as well as precious stones such as diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. Rolex has a massive gemological department whose goal it is to buy, test, arrange, and set diamonds and other precious stones in a range of Rolex models. One of the things they do is check incoming stones to ensure that they are real. Using x-rays, for example, they can test diamonds to ensure they aren't fake. Rolex reports that in the years they have been testing diamonds, only 2 in 20 million have been fake. That might seem like such a small amount it isn't even worth their time to perform the test. Nevertheless, to ensure absolute quality, Rolex tests each batch of diamonds. This should also have an illustrative effect on the diamonds they use, which happen to only be if in clarity and DG in color, the four grades closest to white. Number 4 Rolex dive watches are individually tested in pressurized tanks with water. All Rolex Oyster case watches are thoroughly tested for water resistance. The way that this is often done at watch manufacturers is with an air pressure tank. A watch is placed in a small chamber that is filled with air, and if the pressure changes at all, it means that air leaked into the case. Each Rolex Oyster, as well as Oyster Dive watches, begins with this air pressure treatment. In fact, each case is tested both before and after a movement and dial are placed inside of it.
dive watches receive a separate treatment altogether. After being air pressure tested, Rolex proceeds to test the water resistance of each and every Rolex Submariner and deep sea watch in actual water. This type of test is much less common. Submariner watches are placed in large tubes that are filled with water to ensure that they are water resistant to 300 meters. The test is extremely complex because Rolex employs a complex system for testing if water entered the case. Number 5 Rolex movements are all hand assembled and tested. One of biggest misconceptions about Rolex is that machines build their watches. The rumor is so pervasive that even people at A Block to Watch believed it to be mostly true. This is because traditionally Rolex didn't communicate much on this topic. Well, the truth is that Rolex watches are given all the hands on human attention that you'd like to expect from a fine Swiss made watch. Rolex uses machines in the process for sure. In fact, Rolex easily has the most sophisticated watch-making machinery in the world. The robots and other automated tasks are really used for tasks that humans aren't as good at. These include sorting, filing, cataloging, and very delicate procedures that involve the type of care you want a machine to handle. Most of these machines are still human-operated, though. And everything from Rolex movements to bracelets are assembled by hand.